In today's video, I've got five facts about Motoyasu Kitamura from the series The Rising of the Shield Hero slash a character analysis video. But hey, if you're new here, why not join the Form 4 community by hitting the subscribe button and the notification bell so you don't miss a video. And a quick warning that there will be spoilers in this video, so just a heads up. But with that being said, let's roll intro and get straight into the video. Motoyasu is one of the four legendary heroes. He is a male human around 21 years old, which makes him the eldest of the four, and is also the tallest, standing at 183 centimeters, which makes him six foot. He also has long blonde hair worn in a ponytail and has orange eyes. He is also supposedly the most handsome of the four heroes. Even Naofumi, who thinks the guy is a massive douche, believes that Motoyasu is the most handsome of the bunch. As for attire, Motoyasu wears red and white armor with gold fancy trimmings. I mean, this guy definitely looks the part, but still, he's a douche. Though he does have some good qualities personality-wise. He is very loyal. Surprisingly, he is the friendliest of the four heroes, but of course, as we've seen, many bad traits. <laughs> Most of his bad traits or downfalls all revolve around the same thing. That's right women. And yo, know, I'll go into him and his harem-esque ways later, but to list a few of these bad traits, the first is that he is obviously a bit of a flirt and considers himself quite the ladies man. We often see him cringingly coming onto Philo and Raftalia. He is also easily fooled by women. The whole situation with mine is a prime example of this. He is very easily manipulated and is very self-delusional. I mean, once he's set in his way, his arrogance steps in and Motoyasu will only hear things he wants to hear. To sum this guy up, He's basically an idiot. Motoyasu wields the legendary spear. This spear gives him amazing offensive powers and just like the other four legendary weapons, will evolve and become stronger with the more skills the user acquires. It does of course have the same drawback as the others in which the hero that wields this legendary spear cannot equip any other weapons. Motoyasu as we have seen will use the spear as normal but he can also throw it just like a javelin. This means that he does have some form of range attacks in his arsenal. Appearance wise the spear is basically a long staff that has a special red jewel in the middle of the spearhead that allows the spear to transform with the previously mentioned skills. Now, some of the skills that Motoyasu has acquired so far are as follows. So this shooting star spear, lightning spear, chaos spear, airstrike javelin, rising dragon spear, paralyzed spear, portal spear, and burst lance. Motoyasu's Japanese voice actor is Makoto Takahashi. He has voiced minor one episode characters in series such as Sword Art Online, The Seven Deadly Sins, Haven't You Heard I'm Sakamoto, Kiss Him Not Me, and more. Motoyasu's English voice actor is Xander Mobus. He again has voiced minor characters in such series as Blue Exorcist, Hunter Hunter, but is mainly known for voicing the announcer in Super Smash Bros and Joker from Persona 5. How and why was Motoyasu summoned to this world? Well, courtesy of the spin-off series Yari no Yusha no Yari Naoshi, which is basically a comedy series following the spear hero, we find out about his backstory. And you know what I've got to say, it is way darker than I thought it would be. Prior to being summoned to the other world, he was a university student. Just like in this new world, back in his own world, he was quite the ladies man. A player, if you will, who would have multiple girls on the go at the same time. So there were two specific girls in particular. One was called Momoji, who was a very shy and quiet girl. Then there was Ikuyo, who was the complete opposite, loud and very bossy. Both these girls held very strong feelings for him and both had confessed their love to him. Ikiyo was Motoyasu's classmate and neither of the girls knew about the other girl, but in all of these cases they eventually find out about the other girl. Ikiyo forced Motoyasu to choose between the two girls while Momoji decided to run away from the situation, but before she could get away, Ikiyo's temper finally reached boiling point as she picked up a knife from the kitchen and pointed it towards Momoji. As she declared in standard crazy girl situation way, if you were out of the picture, Motoyasu would be free to date me. Motoyasu, as you can imagine, was, you know, of course shocked by Ikiyo, rushed between the two of them, but ultimately ended up being stabbed in the side of the chest. Now, 
Here's the shocker. It wasn't Ikkyo's blade that pierced him, but Momiji's. That's right, she also held a blade in her hands. Momiji now went from shy and quiet to full-blown yandere, as she repeatedly stabbed Motoyasu because she feared he was seeing other girls beside herself and Ikuyo. She went like full-blown crazy and came up with the ideal conclusion of dying beside Motoyasu and reuniting with him in the afterlife. Now, in comes more psycho yandere as Ikuyo starts stabbing Motoyasu herself, declaring that if anyone was to join him in the afterlife, it would be her. The two of them repeatedly stabbed Motoyasu over and over, to which the overwhelming amount of blood loss led to the end of Motoyasu's life. Now, this leads us to episode 1 of the series, where he was summoned to this world with the other legendary heroes. I know, right? Wow. So, Motoyasu in this new world that reminds him of an online game called Emerald Online from his world still kept the same traits from his previous life. He was a ladies man. It's very easy to see from his party, but Motoyasu is actually trying to live the dream by creating a harem for himself. Fair play to the guy. Basically, everywhere he and his party went, he would always try and pick up more girls. Now, this was even more obvious in his fighting style. He would man the front line alone while his party of girls gave magical support, though rarely, and then cheered for him at the rear. Motoyasu's party actually undergone the most shuffling out of the four heroes, and as you can tell, he didn't really care for male members. The ones that he did have actually ended up leaving because of the way he was with the female members of the party. But some of the female members of the party were also kicked out, and not by Motoyasu. You guessed it, right? Yeah, mine would kick out the female members, which leads me to, you know, wanting to look a bit further into Motoyasu's relationship with her. So of course, after mine framed now for me, she obviously targeted Motoyasu as the hero she was going to manipulate and turn against him. This was because of his obvious weakness to women. But she may actually have felt more for him than just a pawn to use in her games, as she would get jealous of the other female members in his party and kick them out if they got too close to Motoyasu. Though it turns out it was mainly just a lust thing, as true Really, the only thing she liked about him was his good looks. And it, you know, it's safe to say that mine definitely had Motoyasu right where she wanted him, as he believed every word she said and would act on her every word without a single doubt in his mind. He was so blinded by her that he never saw any of the suspicious acts or behaviour that occurred under his very nose. Even when she was questioned for her crimes, and he was presented with evidence, all while she was under the slave's seal to prevent her from lying, he still refused to believe she was a criminal and believed in her with all of his heart. And whether he was in love with her or not has never really been revealed, but it has been confirmed that the two of them had slept together, yes. Much to Motoyasu's knowledge that it was mine's first time, this was obviously not true. She's a tramp. Mine would in fact often seduce Motoyasu for her own personal gains. But thanks for watching, this was my video 5 facts about Motoyasu Kitamura from the series The Rising of the Shield Hero. I hope you enjoyed the video and if you'd like to see more characters from this series, of course let me know in the comments. Don't forget to smash the like button if you enjoyed this video as it really does help these videos reach a wider audience and subscribe for more anime content. Till next time my fellow weebs, PEACE!